Thank you, Bea. Thank you, Sergio, for your invitation of organizing this symposium. I'm trying to explain um, this, uh, this presentation is more uh, related to the personal experience than not really academic study. But in the last uh, years, my I say feel like the Galeón de Manila, the traveling between uh, Spain, Mexico, and the last three years in the island of Guam. So, well, uh, the, people, the people of Mexico have a very special interest in their archaeology, and everybody knows that in the construction of the new countries after their independence from Spain, archaeology play an essential role to construct national identity. If we talk with Mexico, we talk with the pyramids of Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan was one of the first archaeological places related to the, uh, the construction of this identity and national history in the 20th century. This is the excavation of the 1905, uh, remembering and commemorating the first 100 years of the independence of Mexico. And also, there is a place in 1921 that Manuel Gamio, one of the fathers of the anthropology, the Mexican anthropology, makes some kind of social experience with the local people, uh, trying to uh, understand the population of the Valley of Teotihuacan, but also to show and to teach the people suitable <coughs> jobs for their own characteristics, no? to, to prepare the local population to have to be rural workers or uh, to, to uh, read and write in, in a very essential manner. And the 20th century uh, follows and the project in the 60s uh, prepared the city for the tourism. <coughs> no? the thinking uh, also for the construction of reinforcing this national identity and the, 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 the of one official history of the archaeology. And now when we talk in Mexico about the pyramids, always are referred to the pyramids of Teotihuacan. So what is now Teotihuacan? Teotihuacan now it's a, a place uh, very interesting for the academics, but also it's a place that uh, most of the population of Mexico think about uh, the place uh, like uh, uh, have a nice weekend, uh, go to the pyramids, uh, go to the Pyramid of the Sun, make some, have some party on the 21 of March related to this new cool ranks, positive energy, and something mixed with Catholic tradition, some kind of pre-Hispanic religion, etc. For most uh, 100 years, local population are incorporated to the academic projects. And like uh, as a workers so of some type or low level high assistance to the archaeologists. I now don't know any archaeological project where the local population was involved in a more participative way. And in the last uh, years, I was uh, concerned about what is the role of the archaeologists and also the foreign archaeologists doing research in Teotihuacan, uh, reproducing sometimes in non, uh, some colonial situation. I'm asking myself, no? because uh, we don't do an academic work, we make a wonderful uh, in a museums and uh, conference and about that, but we don't incorporate really, really, really local people in, in a more participative way in the in the archaeological projects. It's true that the relationship between researchers and local population is very friendly, but uh, usually it's limited to taking part in some parties concerning local festivities or in the traditional big party after the excavation period. In the early years of the 21th century, Jaime Delgado, an archaeologist from, from Mexico, began an individual study in which we asked to the local communities how they perceived the archaeological site. The conclusion of uh, that study was, were devastating. Local people were only interested in going to the archaeological site to have a nice day with their family and to take part in an experience which involved running to the Pyramid of the Sun and have the, this thing of the positive energy. If they are lucky, to obtain an informal job as temporary craft or sellers. Uh, my question is, well, uh, and also, well, he's tried to, 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 to work with the local college, 
local schools because uh, we found that in the local schools around the Teotihuacan Valley, the students never, never, never went to the archaeological site. They live next to the archaeological site, but never, never, never went in a proper visit to, to their archaeological site. And he tried to make this kind of uh, program from the school, trying to uh, connect the community, the students, the, the, the youngers of the Teotihuacan Valley, to the reality of the everyday job from, the, from archaeology. But there is another question, interesting. That's the local politics and also the tourism. Uh, uh, they are uh, around Teotihuacan. One of it was very, you know, I don't know if you can translate Teotihuacan in now one meets the place where the men became gods and the local authority meets the women become virgins again. No, please. No. <laughs> no. Uh, it was, they are something absolutely out of their reality, of the archaeological. Uh, area about the research, but also of the local people living in, in, in the Teotihuacan Valley. No? Mm, but about the Teotihuacan in colonial times, doesn't exist. But we know it is a very, very important place in the history of the conquest and colonization, but the power of the pyramids forgot um, uh, absolutely the studies about the colonial Teotihuacan. It's unexistent. In 100 years, uh, there are some projects about rehabilitation, architectonical rehabilitation of the, the uh, Coleman site. Uh, but uh, there is no academic project, only one, from Thomas Charlton uh, for five years in the 60s. And there is a divorce between, uh, a friendly divorce, but a divorce between the historians and the archaeologists in the Teotihuacan Valley. Uh, maybe also about the conception of historical archaeology made in, uh, in Mexico and related to what, what in Spain or in other parts of the world think about this kind of historical archaeology is a debate for another uh, conference. But let me finish and with another uh, situation, and a very, very fun situation. In the last three years, more or less, I'm involved with an archaeological project led by Sandra Monton de la Universitat Pompeu Fabra in the Iceland Open. Uh, what is my aportation in this project? Well, part of the, the conquest and the colonization of the Iceland of One was when made by the Visor Royalty of the New Spain. But I will be back about this fact in, in a few moments. Being used to Mexico and to be an Spanish archaeologist working in Mexico, sometimes it's a little bit complicated in some political questions or social questions. I was surprised that a significant part of the local population of Guam had a kind view of the Spanish presence in the island. In fact, part of the population is more critical with its recent history linked to, to the Second World War and the role of the United States. This is the Umatak, the place Umatak, where Magallanes arrived in 1521, in the same year that Hernán Cortés was conquering Mexico City, when Mexico Tenochtitlan. We are doing all research in this area. Here, last year, working with, with the people. And she's with Enrique, not she. Enrique, say hello. Yes. Enrique is here, is a member of the project as well. And this is uh, the reality of the Second World War and the, the the one, the island of one. No, the, the, the Islanders, uh, the, the Chamorro people recognized themselves as Islanders to make a clear se uh, their separation from the continental ones, the America. The current use of the island as the first line of the defense from the United States, as well as a medium high level tourist island, does it not seem to have a create sustainable development project for the local population. It's really surprising that apparently, the Spaniards now are the ones with the lesser colonial discourse in all the Asians involved in the island. Back to Mexico. Well, this is the presence of the influence of the Mexican culture in, in the island of Juan. The presence of metates, the traditional dances and, and music, and the gastronomy. It's like a Spanish. For a people who work in Spain and work in Mexico, and it's not really Spanish, it's really Mexican. And I made uh, just like this year, in fact, in this year, in February, March of this year, 
I presented several conferences in Mexico about the historical archaeology project in Guam. I was a little concerned because it was a new subject for me, and I didn't know how the Mexican people would react about the old proposal related that the concept of Spanish colonialism applied to the Mariana Islands. The expedition of Magallanes, looking for a new maritime, etc., etc. But in the 17th century, the island of Guam was officially incorporated to the Spanish Empire as a critical place related to the Galeon de Marila. Also, the colonization of the Mariana Island was associated to the Jesuit project, the expansion about the, around the world. Uh, compared with the fall of the Mexican Empire or the Inca Empire, the conquest and colonization of the Pacific Island has been considered uh, by traditional history a less violent and dramatic for indigenous population. And that's not true. There is, well, there is no doubt that the conquest and colonization orders were given by the Crown of Spain, but the organization of the orders, the Real Estelulas, were made for the viceroyalty of the New Spain in the Mexico City and the port, uh, port of Acapulco. I was interested to see how Mexican would react that the, about the fact that they were conquerors and colonizers too. And the reaction of the attendants of the conference, postgraduates and academic staff from universities, was a little bit surprising for me. At first, the, the audience was, what? Uh, but second, immediately, they were very proud to be an active part of the process of conquest of colonization of the Asia. Uh, and the coffee break on this conference, they say, oh, it's true. We are an active part of this project. I say, OK. Uh, it was a little bit confused for me. No? Let me, uh, uh, and I was, let me, let me make myself clear on one point. The conference was made in the Escuela Nacional de Antropología e Historia, in the Instituto de Investigaciones Antropológicas de la Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México. And these two institutions are characterized by a strong rejection of the process of conquest and colonization made by Spaniards in Mexico. Well, that was very interesting. Increasingly, I say, and I finish, increasingly, a research project forced us to work with global perspective. However, a project that, from the academic point of view, can be seen in a global way as a Spanish colonialism could be very much complex. So it's very easy, easy, the, to identify the colonialist process in a historical and archaeological way. In pre-Hispanic times, Teotihuacan was a colonialist culture to other contemporaneous societies. And also there is, uh, in the academia, the power of the pyramids. Okay, that's nice, I like it. But there is a gap in the colonial Teotihuacan. And I am not really surprised that the study of historical archaeology in Teotihuacan Valley is in its infancy. I'm a little more surprised that historian archaeologists are not re really developed research in this area. But, well, vamos a ver. In some ways, I think the question must be related to how we construct the colonial discourse in the last century and how its impact affects to people and the academia. Using archaeology to construct national identity is very easy to accomplish, but very complicated to unravel. I feel that there is some kind of low-level colonialist relationship in the daily life in the modern society in Mexico and Guam. As foreigners working in another <coughs> country, it is sometimes very conflict complicated to change these cultural dynamics because can be perceived as an intrusion on internal politics or working relationship between institutions. Also, I agree the necessity to decolonize archaeological theory and practice, but also the everyday relationship between academics and people and institutions. And maybe a little now pessimist how, uh, about how to achieve this goal in a short time because the impact of the construction of national identities and the colonial discourse. But to identify and recognize this situation can be the first step towards tackling the problem of colonialist narratives and the relationship in everyday situations. Plus, archaeology is about people. So there's the people from Guam and the people from Mexico. And that's all. Thank you.